How Milton Hershey Brought Milk Chocolate to America on the Corner of Chocolate Avenue. Written by Zipporah Cohen, illustrated by Stephen Salerno. The story of the inspiration, perseverance, and benevolence behind America's most beloved chocolate comes to vivid life in this tantalizing biography. Ooh, that's big. Inspiration, that's when you get a great idea. Perseverance is when you keep doing it, even when it's tough. And benevolence is when you give away things that you didn't have to. A biography of Milton Hershey, written by Zipporah Cohen. It's called On the Corner of Chocolate Avenue. Look at that piece of chocolate right in the middle. It makes me hungry for some chocolate. At the corner of Chocolate Avenue and Cocoa Avenue lives a story, a story that began more than 150 years ago, a story about chocolate. Though Milton Hershey probably never tasted chocolate as a child. Ooh, that's interesting. Chocolate was an expensive treat for the rich in the 1860s. That's probably why he'd never tasted it then because Milton's family was very poor. His belly was often empty and his feet were often bare. On market day, Milton looked longingly at the displays of treats, sugar plums, molasses puffs, peanut brittle, peppermint humbugs, peerless wafers, whorehound sticks. It doesn't sound like they have very much chocolate in that window of bakery sweets. Because his family moved often, Milton attended six schools in seven years and barely learned to read. When he was 14, he left school to help support his family. Apprentice to a printer, which basically means he was learning the trade while he worked for the printer, Milton hated the loud and boring work, so he threw his hat into the printing press to get himself fired. At Royer's Ice Cream Parlor and Garden, Milton washed dishes and stirred big cauldrons of boiling sugar water. When he was promoted, he learned to make ice cream, taffy lollipops, and marshmallows. That sounds like a better job. Candy made people happy. Candy made Milton happy. How wonderful would it be to build his own candy business? At 19, Milton borrowed money to open the Spring Garden Confectionery Works in Philadelphia. Confectionery is a fancy word for candies and sweets, about 100 miles from his home. But the price of sugar was high and profits were low. After six years, his business failed. There's Milton Hershey in 1876 at age 19 in Philadelphia, failed. At that time, sugar was made from the sugarcane plant and produced mainly in the Caribbean islands. Sugarcane was difficult to plant and harvest, leading to high prices. Years later, sugar would also be made from sugar beets in Europe and America, and its price would drop. Next, Milton opened a candy business further away in Chicago. It failed. He opened one in the biggest city in America, New York City. That one failed too. It was time to go home. But Milton loved candy too much to give up. In a small rented room back in Pennsylvania, he cooked caramels. He wrapped them by hand and sold them from a push cart through the streets of Lancaster. Oh, those tricky caramels. Other candy makers use wax in their caramels, but they were hard to chew and stuck to people's teeth. Milton did experiment after ex experiment adding fresh milk to make his caramels creamy but not sticky until he got the recipe just right. He cooked up all kinds of caramels, bean shaped McGinty's, a penny for ten, fancy lotus caramels, a dollar for a five pound box, Jim Cracks and Roly Poles, caramels for every taste and every budget. His rented room became a factory. His push cart became a store. 
Milton realized the secret to making money from caramels was not to peddle them at a few at a time to people walking by, but to sell them in big shipments to stores in other cities and countries. The store became the Lancaster Caramel Company, and soon Milton was selling his caramels to stores in England, China, Australia. And there's Milton Hershey in 1893 at age 36. Despite his success, Milton looked for new ways to make candy. At the Chicago World's Fair, he followed his nose. Oh, the mouth-watering aroma of melted chocolate. The chocolate-making machines from German mesmerized Milton. That meant they made him very interested in it. He couldn't take his eyes off of them. He bought the whole exhibit on the spot and shipped it to Pennsylvania. Wow, those are look like some fancy machines, and they all have really hard words, names in German. I can't pronounce most of them. One is a twin cocoa grinder. One is a mixer. One is a duration machine. I don't know what that does. A knocking table and a cocoa roasting machine. The very next year, Milton founded Hershey Chocolate Company. He told his cousin, the caramel business is a fad, but chocolate is something we will always have. Milton had a new vision. Could he create delicious milk chocolate in bars just for eating? Affordable milk chocolate for everyone, not just the rich? Milton headed back to the family farm. He mixed chocolate made from cocoa beans grown all over the world with milk from dairy cows raised right next door. He stared at the burnt mush. Milton saw that the chocolate, which was high in fat, couldn't mix with the milk, which was mostly water. Making milk chocolate made cooking caramels seem easy. Milton worked from sunup to sundown. He stirred big kettles of milk and sugar for hours in search for perfect recipes. And when he heated the milk to evaporate some of the water, the chocolate tasted burnt. But when he used cream instead of milk, the chocolate didn't harden well and spoiled quickly. Milton even changed the kind of cows he raised to ones that gave milk with less fat. That helped, though the chocolate wasn't yet perfect. For thousands of years in Central and South America, chocolate was consumed mostly as a bitter drink. When solid dark chocolate was first made in Europe in the 1800s, it was expensive and mostly a treat for the wealthy. Then Nestle invented milk chocolate in Switzerland, but it was still handmade and expensive. And the process was a secret that the Swiss had kept for more than 20 years. And there's the different cows. Holstein's had 3.65% fat, Asia Arshire are 3.86, and Brown Swiss 4.04%. He hired scientists. He hired workers from chocolate companies in Europe to try to learn their secrets. Cook and cool, test and taste. Milton and his staff worked day and night on his milk chocolate recipe. Years went by, batch after batch, one failure after another, until finally, he was 43 years old and America had its first chocolate bar. A melt in your mouth, milk chocolate a milk chocolate that stayed fresh on store shelves. Milton sold the first Hershey bar in 1900. He also sold the Lancaster Caramel Company for $1 million so he could make more milk chocolate. Instead of making his chocolate bars by hand, Milton set up assembly lines in his factory which divided each step among many workers to make chocolate bars more quickly. With assembly lines, Milton made his milk chocolate affordable for everyone just five cents a bar. He put his chocolate bars in restaurants, drugstores, and grocery stores, not just candy stores, so people could buy them wherever they went. The milk from local cows arrived at the factory daily, where workers combined it with sugar and chocolate, mixed it for four days, and then poured it into bar-shaped molds. Within a few years, the Hershey Chocolate Company had a factory running six days a week. I like all those brown trucks that say Hershey. 
The Hershey Kiss was born in 1907, named for the kissing sound the drops of chocolate made as they were released onto the conveyor belt. Sold in boxes for just 10 cents, the foil-wrapped chocolate was an instant hit. Hershey syrup was a sensation too, first made for pharmacists to add to bitter medicines to make them taste better. Milton sold chocolate syrup in cans for families to stir into milk or pour over ice cream. Not everything Milton tried was a success. In the 1930s, vitamins were discovered. Milton joined the country's vitamin craze, mixing ground beets, celery, parsley, and turnips into Hershey's bars and kisses. One of his employees said that they tasted just about as bad as that sounds. Chocolate and caramels made Milton a very rich man, but he never forgot what it was like to be poor. He and his wife Catherine created a school to give orphan boys a free education and something that he had never had. He built an entire town for his workers to live in with tree-lined streets, libraries, schools, trolleys, a swimming pool, affordable homes, and, well, Milton and his wife never had children of their own, but they founded the Hershey Industrial School, now called the Milton Hershey School, and later Milton donated his share of his company worth $60 million to the school, so its mission to give kids in need a free education would continue indefinitely. So let's see what else they have in Hershey. Even a carousel in his town in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Look at all those people having a good time on a carousel. And today, if you stand on the corner of Chocolate Avenue and Cocoa Avenue, the first two streets Milton built, you can still smell the sweet scent of chocolate from the Hershey Chocolate Factory as it churns out milk chocolate for you, me, and chocolate lovers everywhere. And we have a picture of Milton at age 16 when he was an apprentice at Royer's Ice Cream Parlor and Garden. And the next picture is when he's at age 30. One is only happy in proportion as he makes others feel happy. That's a nice saying. That's what Milton Hershey said. And then the bottom, Milton Hershey was some of the students at the Hershey Industrial School, now known as Hershey, Milton Hershey School. The school provides free education to more than 2,000 boys and girls a year from lower income families from kindergarten to 12th grade all thanks to the generosity of Milton Hershey and his wife, Catherine. And if you really want to learn more about um, Milton Hershey, you could travel to find some books on him, or you could go to Hershey, Pennsylvania. They have a big amusement park there, too. And I'm sure it would be a very fun place to visit and learn more about chocolate and Milton Hershey. <laughs>